Okay, so we'll start with the equation that we left off with last time when we were doing a preview of resonance. So this won't be resonance, because resonance has to do with things that are oscillating. First we'll do exponentials, because they're a little bit simpler algebraically. So here we go. Okay, so of course we're going to talk about an inhomogeneous equation because it's the right hand side that creates the effect. Not by itself, by, by its interplay with the left hand side. So, as I mentioned last time, we'll look at this equation and we don't suspect the trap because it looks like any other equation that we've solved. We can even eyeball the roots here and recognize that there will be three and four and we have some right hand side so we think we have a recipe for how to find the general solution which is find a particular solution first the null space is clear put them together match the initial conditions which I'm skipping because our goal is the general solution and you're done but the problem shows its face very early on so the two roots are three and four as we discussed so we can actually write down the null space, why don't we do that? So the general solution equals saving space for a particular solution. So that's the null space. Now we have to think of a particular solution and we know exactly what to do. Which is to guess that it's e to the 4t and then plug it in and we won't get e to the 4t, we'll get some multiple of e to the 4t. So then we'll adjust the coefficient and we'll be done and we'll have our particular solution. And you can, without even trying it, realize that something will go wrong. What will go wrong? Yes, so you will get zero. You won't just, you won't get some multiple of e to the 4t. You will get zero times e to the 4t. And when you get zero times e to the 4t, you're not able to adjust the coefficient in your guess to make it exactly 1 times e to the 4t. And why do you get 0 times e to the 4t? Well, that's because your guess of a, part of the partic of a particular solution is in the null space. And we know exactly what happens to the functions in the null space. You get 0. So that makes it a bad guess. So we have to guess something else. Okay, so that's the suggestion. We've kind of seen this before. We saw it in the, in the simplest OD in the world just a moment ago. When your original guess of the exponential doesn't work, try multiplying it by t. So that's what we're going to do here. And that will involve a little bit of algebra. So let's go ahead and do it. So we won't guess e to the 4t. That's doomed. We will guess t times e to the 4t. So let's see what happens. So in order to plug this in here and see what we get, we need to evaluate its derivative and its second derivative. So why don't you guys do it on your own and I'll do it quietly on the board and then we can compare our notes. So I cheated a little bit. I combined two terms because I've done this before many, many times, so I knew it was coming. Let me show you what two terms it is. So you can easily work out this formula by using the product rule twice, and then you'll see that this term appears twice, and so it always gets combined. So with this experience, I would do it right away, this, this, this cross term. I would just double it up to begin with. I have to pause a little bit to make sure I'm grabbing the right thing, but it saves this step. Did everybody get the same result? Okay, that's very good. Or else I was saying all of these wise things about the wrong answer. Okay, so now it's time to plug it in. So just to save space, you know what? I will denote my linear operators by L for linear. This is a linear operator, and I just don't want to write it again. So I'll just say LU. 
meaning L u sub p, meaning I'm plugging this u sub p into this linear operator. All right, there we go, we've plugged it in. Now, you can be momentarily nervous because you need to get e to the 4t or some multiple of it. And we definitely have a bunch of t times e to the 4t's mixed in. So let's see how much of t times e to the 4t we have mixed into this expression. What is that? Zero, it cancels out. It's, it's a non-miracle. You can make it a relatively simple algebraic exercise to make sure that when this situation happens, that when this power matches the roots of the characteristic equation on the left-hand side, and you plug in t times e to that power t, that all of these terms that include a multiple of t will cancel. So you can do it in absolute generality, and you will see that that will happen. It will happen in this case, and, it, and in no other case. So if you have a mismatch, it won't happen. I don't even need to do the algebra. I know it on the basis of linear algebra. Because I know that the null space is two-dimensional. So there cannot be another... Well, I've overstepped my... <laughs> because there are other terms. So never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll think about it some more. Okay, so they all cancel. And the answer is, let's see, let's not make a mistake here. E to the 4t, that's not what I was hoping for. <laughs> so there's no adjustment. E to the 4t, I wish there had been some number here, like 7, which would have told us that our guess should have been 1 7th t times e to the 4t. But, oh well, so it's exactly 1, so t times e to the 4t. And now we have our general solution. And this, the integrity of this problem, not the right word, is restored. So that's what you do. And I will use the term frequency loosely. When the frequency of the drive matches one of the zeros on the left hand side. So that wasn't a very good sentence because half of it was physics and half of it was math. So let me put it all in physics terms. The resonance occurs, this sort of thing occurs, when the frequency of the drive matches one of the natural frequencies of the system. Remember, we refer to these roots as the natural frequency of the system. This is not a great example because it doesn't have sines and cosines. So of course we'll consider that next. 